Hi everybody, my name is Nathan Goheen. Uh, thanks for joining me and uh, you know checking out this uh, this little bit of information that I want to kind of talk about and share. Um, so in the last video that I did, um, I introduced us to the uh, to the harmonic series, which is um, which is a constant in nature and it affects how we hear sound. That's kind of what I'm most interested in right now. Um, and so basically, quick review, um, if we play a note or we hear a sound, basically we hear the bass, the bass sound, which we call the fundamental, which is quote unquote the sound. And then on top of that is many other, uh, you could call them like upper tones. I think that's my favorite phrase for describing them. That in the upper tones, all are related to the fundamental. And it doesn't matter if the sound is very high up, very low down, or just in the middle. The, the sequence that these upper tones appear is constant. And so, where am I going here? So basically how we determine whether a uh, person is singing or a piano is playing or a clarinet is playing a note, um, these upper tones help us differentiate that. Not uh, the, the volume that they're present and also um, how they, uh, the, um, the envelopes of them, if they come in quickly or if they come in gradually, if they leave quickly or if they leave gradually. Um, and so if someone's like, wow, she has a really beautiful voice, um, part of the beauty in that voice is the, is the presence of these upper tones that is unique to her. And she's probably spent time consciously or unconsciously working on, how to f filter these tones in and out. So, sorry, that was longer and a little bit uh, different than how I was thinking I would explain it, but I hope that makes sense. Um, so we talked, I think we went through like the first eight of these, or the first eight tones, the fundamental and then the next seven upper tones. So what I've been working on a lot, just, um, out of pure interest myself is um, turning, let's say, one tone into one fundamental, into just the fundamental, cutting out all of the other upper tones. So we just have a fundamental, and then I will myself add in the upper tones as I want to, or as I see fit. So when we just literally have the fundamental with nothing else, it doesn't, it occurs um, infrequently in, in nature, very infrequently. Um, one of the ways it occurs is whistling. Um, singing bulls are another pretty, pretty much, they just have the fundamental. But what's super cool is that now living in the 21st century, we have access to this amazing technology, which they actually had access to their own technology back in the days. Um, but what it's really easy for me to just generate a single fundamental, no upper tones, just the single fundamental. Um, and that's called a sine wave. Uh, you may be familiar with that term. So basically here is a sine wave. And so nothing else is on it. Um, if we were to add the first upper tone, it would be an octave above, a doubling of frequencies, like I said in my other video. And the next upper tone is a fifth above that. And then we add another upper tone, a fourth above that. So we have fundamental, an octave above that, a fifth above that, and then a fourth above that. So, um... And then we can keep going, have a uh, major third, a minor third, 
and another minor third, and then an octave. So um, these are all, they call them integers. Basically, you double the frequency of the, lo of the fundamental, and then you double, and then you triple the frequency. Here's the doubling, the octave, the tripling, the quadrupling, uh, I think it's quin, multiplying by five, quintupling, quintupling, multiplying by six, by seven, and by eight. So that gives us these beautiful numbers that are all completely related to each other. It's awesome. Um, one of the cool things about that is that there's um there's like a uh, there's an acoustic phenomena in our ears and how we perceive sound that if you play two different tones two different pitches you will hear and I, and right now I'm talking about the the sine waves these are just pure fundamental tones pure fundamental tones no upper tones whatsoever so if we play two pitches our ears will perceive a third pitch it's absolutely amazing that this happens basically what's happening is is that we take the frequency or cycles per second of the higher pitch subtract the frequency or cycles per second of the lower pitch and then we have our um, I, uh, they were sometimes they're credited as tartini tones uh, combination tone is the word I'm looking for um, because you combine two tones and get a third now they're they're obviously not as present as the two tones being um, played but they are there and our ears perceive them and they help us determine um, pitch and key um, so let me think here um, so one of the cool things about the harmonic series is that because it is all based on a single fundamental I'm gonna lower I'm gonna lower my fundamental from middle C down an octave so because it's all based on a single fundamental um, if you go through the harmonic series like that you can take out the root note or the fundamental you can take out another one you can take out another upper tone and you can take out another upper tone and these in these two upper tones right here, we've got the uh, we've got the th the third upper tone, or excuse me, it's the second upper tone, and which is the uh, this is always a little bit dicey how people have been labeling these because you got the fundamental ah never mind um, so if we're going to take two tones. then these combine to form an, a, a, uh, another tone which is related to the harmonic series. It's beautiful. And if anybody's been watching back here, I'm not playing a C. I'm playing a G and an E. But a C is how the tuner within my DAW is recognizing the pitch because the frequency of this E minus the frequency of this G is equal to C. And these are in the G and the E are both found within, are both upper tones within this C fundamental. I'm not sure if that makes complete sense, but it's absolutely amazingly beautiful that all you have to do is subtract the frequency of a higher tone and the frequency of the lower tone and you will get a another tone that is found within a uh, within a harmonic series. For example, we're in C right now. Um, 
this gets a little bit dicier when we are in equal temperament. Right now, I've I didn't mention it before, but I got a surprise for you. I was I had tuned this keyboard to the harmonic series. So basically what that means is that instead of the 12 tone system that Western music is based around, I tuned it to the, the, um, the harmonic series, which means that within, within our uh, 12 tone series, we've sharpened some tones and we flatten some tones for the ability to play in 12 keys. And, you know, playing in 12 keys is great. It's a marvelous thing. But the downside is, is that our sense of pitch is a little bit distorted. For example, um, if I was to play, if I was to change the tuning on this instrument from the harmonic series to equal temperament, let me do that right quick, and play the same E and the same G, you may not be able to hear it, but check out the tuner. Oh, excuse me. The E and the G. It's still reading a C, but the needle is waving much more than when I was in the um, than when I was in the harmonic series tuning. Let's see that again. Steady, consistent. And so like I was trying to say, um, within equal temperament, we adjusted some notes. And then this little adjustment, it changes our combination tone. So that combination tone doesn't fall beautifully within the set system. It's close, but it is not exact. It is not precise. In the harmonic, in the harmonic tuning, it is precise. In equal temperament, not precise. Uh, obviously in the harmonic tuning, you're only tuning to one pitch, so you can only work within that pitch. Um, but it is something to experience uh, the how beautifully in tune a pitch can be. That may sound like a pretty dissonant chord, but check out that, that needle is very constant. Very constant. Let me try it with the equal temperament. See what we get. It's a mess. It's an absolute mess. Um, so I think it's just interesting what we have sacrificed to get ourselves into this elegantly beautiful equal temperament can play in all 12 keys and what we you know the sacrifices and the gains to go from equal temperament from the harmonic tuning um obviously both systems are great beautiful music is made within both systems um but it's just something that I wasn't aware of for a long time, and I thought more musicians might be interested in this. Um, the last thing that I want to mention is that when we were when I when I was talking about uh, combination tones, again I, I just retuned this to the harmonic series within C. Um, so talking about combination tones. Um, that's how we get um, binaural beats. Uh, I don't know, that's a pretty popular phrase right now. Uh, a lot of people are really into binaural beats. Basically, it's um, two notes that are slightly different from each other. Um, so if you, if you have a, um, if you have a pitch that's vibrating at 500 cycles per second, and another pitch that's vibrating at 510 cycles per second. Like I was talking earlier, remember the combination tone formula, 510 minus 500 
is 10, 10 cycles per second. Now that's a lower pitch than we can hear. Our ears only go down to about 20 hertz or 20 cycles per second. But um, there's, there's a lot of, but that's an example of a binaural beat. Um, another, you could do like, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think, I think like between zero and maybe 40 hertz or 40 cycles per second is considered binaural beats. So if you had 540 beats and you took a wave, or excuse me, if you had a frequency at 540 and another frequency at 500, then you would create a binaural, binaural beat at 40, uh, 40 uh, cycles per second, which you can hear. You can hear 40 cycles per second. Um, it's just fascinating to me that how this is all interrelated. Um, I guess basically the gist of what I'm trying to say is that within one single tone, a pure sine wave, this fundamental, we have information that gives us rhythm, gives us rhythm, it gives us harmony, and it gives us a tuning system, um, all within one note. And, you know, like I said, in the, I think it was like late 16th century, uh, I think there's like two people credited with creating equal temperament. One was a Chinese man and one was a European. And they arrived at it very, uh, very close together, I think, without any correspondence between the two of them. But um, regardless, the equal temperament is just one way of many to hear music. And I think that if more people knew about basing music on the harmonic series, it could uh, it could open us up to lots of different things. I hope that wasn't too confusing. I know that I kind of jumped around a lot. But if you have any questions or are have any statements or, you know, interested in um, interested in more of this, just let me know. Um, I am also teaching lessons. If you want to if you want to know more information about that, you can reach out me, reach out to me through YouTube, through Facebook, through Instagram. I've also got a website, Nathan Goheen. It's N-A-T-H-A-N-G-O-H-E-E-N dot com. Uh, you can reach out to me through that. And I hope you liked what you saw. And I'll talk with you guys later. Thank you.